November is my birthday month. I turned 29. I feel like this would just be a whole year of me saying I'm almost 30 because 29 just doesn't feel like a real age. I remember I used to say when I was in my early 20s that I thought I would be really good at being in my 30s and I still think that. I think the older I get, the more I feel like I'm coming into the correct age. It is a weird feeling knowing that I'll never be in my 20s again after this year but I'm not necessarily sad about that either. I went on a bit of a reading spree in November because I did realise that I had a bit of catching up to do with my Goodreads challenge if I wanted to complete it this year. I also just really had the urge to read some of the big hitters from the last year or so that I just haven't read yet. The thing I did do in November was download the Borrow Box app which is the audiobook or ebook app or one of the apps that you can get so you can borrow ebooks or audiobooks from the library. I've always been a stickler for physical books because I love physical books obviously but also because I feel like reading is a chance for me to not be on my phone or just not be engaging in technology for once which I pretty much do in all other aspects of my life. So I was very hesitant to use ebooks but what sort of pushed me over the edge was the fact that my library has started only really getting some books on ebooks. They're not getting everything in a physical copy. So the only way to really read some of these books without paying for them was via this app. I actually was pleasantly surprised with reading on an ebook. I feel like it almost made me read more because anytime I was on my phone and sort of scrolling aimlessly, I sort of said to myself, well, if you're on your phone, why not go onto the app and start reading instead? So I feel like it was more effective for me to stop using my phone in a bad way even though I was on my phone more because I was using it to read. I think it also helped that the two books I've read on that app I've quite enjoyed as well. So the first one I read was Crying at H Mart by Michelle Zorna, which was like basically like the biggest hit book of the last couple of years. Michelle Zorna is the artist behind the music band named Japanese Breakfast, which is not music I've ever really listened to, but I have heard of Japanese Breakfast. This book is about her mother's death and sort of chronicles their relationship from when she was a small child up to an adult to finding out that she had a terminal cancer and the grieving process afterwards as well. It's obviously an incredibly sad book, not just the fact that her mother dies, but the fact that they had quite a combative relationship when she was younger, especially when she was a teenager and young adult and a big part of her grief is her regret that she spent so much of the time when her mother was alive arguing with her and they were only really starting to sort of reconcile and form a more healthy relationship when her mother got diagnosed. It was a really easy to read book. The content was really fascinating. I didn't think the writing was necessarily top notch. Not to say that she's a bad writer but I felt like it was following a trend which I feel like I'm noticing in some newer books in that there's just a lot of descriptions used and they're not using metaphor or simile, it's just describing a series of, well in this case it was a lot of food or just a location, pure straight up description of what the person in the book is looking at. And I find that a very boring thing to read because I think the role of a novel is not just to describe something but to tell you how either you should feel about it or how the character is feeling about it. Not to say that this book as a memoir should have been using more metaphor or simile or anything like that but it is something that I noticed in this book that I realised was something I've been noticing in a lot of books recently. This book has been out for so long it's not like I need to recommend it to anyone but if you haven't read it it's definitely worth a read. It is quite fascinating. Next I read um, Seeing Other People by Diana Reed. I was really disappointed in this book because I read Diana Reed's first book Love and Virtue earlier this year and it's still my favourite book that I've read this year. I really enjoyed it. It was such a sort of compulsive read about young people in Australia. It really felt like the Australian Sally Rooney in terms of like normal people and conversations with friends and then reading this felt like how I felt reading 
Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney because this almost felt like a parody of the kind of book that Diana Reid clearly wants to write about young people who are sort of overly self-aware and overly analysing themselves. But the level of analysis that these characters had about themselves and each other was so unrealistic that it completely took me out of the story that I was trying to tell. It might be conceivable to have maybe one character who is that self-aware, but all three of the sort of main characters of this story were so ridiculously self-aware about their own actions and about other people's actions. Or not even self-aware, but just so analytical. That didn't ring true to my experience of people, which is for the most part people are not thinking about other people that much. The main plot of the story is about two sisters. It's almost like a sense and sensibility retelling a little bit in that the older one is called Eleanor and she's the sensible one. The younger one is called Charlie and she's the artistic actress. Charlie has a crush on the director of the play that she is in, a woman called Helen, who is also her roommate. And then um, Eleanor, who has just broken up with her long-term boyfriend, also starts to get entangled with Helen. And so it just becomes this story of crossed relationships and confused feelings and all that kind of stuff. I just didn't find this readable at all. I found it very clunky. As I was saying, the analysis of the characters just took me straight out of the story and got in the way of you feeling any sort of emotion about these people because it all felt so clinical in a way. Very much disappointed, especially as I really love the cover as well. It's such a pretty colour of blue and the little illustrations of the people on the beach are very cute. And this was like a real spur of the moment purchase when I saw it in Kmart. So it was just a bit disappointing when I'd been looking forward to reading this one. Next I read Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. This is another sort of big hit of the year about a middle-aged woman who's a professor at a college in America and a new teacher joins the staff called Vladimir and she basically has a massive crush on him. And in the meantime her husband has been accused of of sexual assault from women who he had relationships with while they were students of his while he was teaching at the college. It is very much about this main female character and her opinions on things because it's written from her perspective and the writing style is very specific to this character, which I really enjoyed because it felt very honest to this character. Her opinion on you know what her husband has done is that she's not necessarily on his side but she doesn't feel that much sympathy for the young women because she knew about all these affairs while they were happening and from her perspective the young women were consenting to what was happening. She doesn't so much buy into the idea of the differences in power and consent being complicated because she herself states right in the beginning of the book that she always loved older men when she was younger herself. The ending got quite silly. It almost decided it wanted a plot right at the end of the story and it really came out of the blue, I felt, when the rest of the story had been so plotless and just an explanation of his character and the way she interacts with everyone around her. But I did really enjoy it. I really enjoyed the way it was written. It felt like it was commenting on things that are really relevant, but it didn't feel like it was trying to tap into a particular literary trend, which I very much appreciated. And then I finally finished The Mare of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. I was really enjoying the first half of this novel. I felt like a lot was happening almost at the end of every chapter. There was like a new reveal and then it kind of slowed down in the last half of the book. There's the introduction of this character Lucetta who is an old love interest of the mayor himself, the mayor of Casterbridge. They had a tryst without being married so she comes into the town basically being like, well you have to marry me now. You definitely feel like there's a lot of moral judgment being held on poor Lucetta and she really has quite an awful ending and Thomas Hardy's sort of internalised misogyny is coming out where it definitely feels like he's judging her more than he's judging him. I felt like she really got the raw end of the deal when it came to this story. Not that he has a great ending either. I'm definitely glad to have read it and I really did enjoy the first half. I think Cardi could have just like got to the end of the story a lot quicker. There's an adaptation with Kieran Hines from like 2004 or something. I kind of want to watch that because I think it would be really good as a mini series.
morning. It is currently quarter past eight in the morning on January the 1st. 2023 obviously I did go to a very chill new year's eve party i did stay up till midnight last night and probably got to sleep around 2 a.m and yet my brain doesn't see the logic of well you missed out on some of the sleep you would normally have so let's just sleep in today it decided that i should still wake up at 6 a.m so i thought rather than just lying in my bed not sleeping i should just maybe do something and then hopefully i can convince my brain to have a really great afternoon nap i feel like 2022 was a really weird blur mostly because I was working from home from January to June pretty much even though I would be doing the same thing like the same job if I was going into an office the act of like leaving my house and going to an office and interacting with people just makes the weeks a little bit more distinctive than they are when you work from home I think and it wasn't like we were actually in lockdown either it was something that the company that I work for decided that they would get everyone working from home to avoid all their staff going down with COVID at the same time because the beginning of the year was when the Western Australian government opened our borders because we had had very like strict shut borders ever since the pandemic began pretty much but I guess the highlight of the year absolutely was getting a new job and that's very much made the last four months of the year much more memorable. I'm really enjoying it so I'm really looking forward to doing a full year this year of that job and seeing for the first time how a whole year looks. Um, so I have one more book that I haven't talked about here that I finished. I finally finished my Goodreads challenge uh, two days ago I think it was and finished off with I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This was obviously the biggest book of the year. Jeanette McCurdy was a massive Nickelodeon star. She played Sam on iCarly. And so the revelations that during that time and like her whole childhood that she was suffering under immense trauma, mainly stemming from her mum, but also stemming from other people as well. I think that gives it an extra shock, especially for people my age. Well, she's only a year older than me. So even though I didn't really watch iCarly, that show was still a massive part of the kids pop culture of the time. And I guess the apparent innocence of these kids shows that we grew up with compared to what was actually happening really heightens the horrificness of what she went through. The way she has written this memoir is quite fascinating. It's really short chapters. She's almost writing it in present tense. I don't have the book with me now to check whether it's actual present tense but she's writing it as if it's actually happening to her right then and there and so she's not putting any of her current judgment on what she's writing until really the end when she has a chapter sort of more discussing how she feels about everything now. She writes about her mother in a way that you really see the whole person and not in a way that's sort of presenting both sides of the story like you definitely don't feel any sympathy with her mother but you do also see that she was more than likely suffering her own traumas when McCurdy talks about the way her grandparents behave as well because her mother was around her all the time you assume the people at Nickelodeon would have seen the way that she treated McCurdy as well to a certain extent but because they were on a successful show and making money out of her I guess they didn't say anything. It's a really sad really devastating book but it does have a really positive ending. Watching a few interviews with Jeanette McCurdy she's sort of talking about how motherhood gets put up on a pedestal and how it feels like you can't criticize mothers for anything because they're considered saints just for being mothers and she's basically writing this book to say no it's actually okay to talk about the fact that if your mother has not done her job correctly then she doesn't deserve that pedestal. I imagine it's a book that's going to help a lot of people. If you're the type of person who grew up being a parent pleaser who was always trying to second guess what would make your parents happy, Jeanette McCurdy's case is to the extreme but I think a lot of people can relate to that aspect as well because I think that's very common among children. You're either the child who rebels against your parents or you're the one who constantly wants to um, impress them and get their approval. So I'm not going to do a top 10 of the year or top anything of the year because I only read 10, 24 books and there's not really a huge amount of them that I feel that strongly about. I will say that my favourite book that I read this year was Love and Virtue by Diana Reid. That is a book I would recommend to anyone who loves Litfic. Anyone who loves Sally Rooney would absolutely love that book. It really is the Australian Sally Rooney. Reading goals for 2023, I probably am going to stick to my 24 books reading goal on Goodreads just because I don't want to stress myself out. I think I would like to definitely set aside more time for reading because I feel like I just do it very haphazardly and I just watch a lot of films. Any spare time I have when I'm at home I usually will put on a film and so if I set aside more time for reading it would mean me having to accept that I'm going to watch less films this year and the problem is I do want to read more but I also don't want to watch less films but it's just physically not possible for me to do both of these things. However I feel like I could be 
more intentional with my film watching because I think I sit through films that I should probably stop watching just because I want to tick them off on my letterbox. But I end up just scrolling on my phone with the film on in the background and then ticking it off feels almost like cheating because I wasn't really watching it. And that's not a particularly useful way to spend my time. So I think if anything, that is my goal this year is to DNF more films if I'm not enjoying them. I think that being more intentional is kind of a good goal for everything. I should have explained this right at the beginning of the video, but I'm currently house sitting for my grandparents who are in Sydney. So I'm currently sitting in what they call their library, which I think is a fair name because there are a lot of books. This is just one side of the room. There are more books either side of me as well. And I'm very grateful to be in their house because they have really good aircon. It actually was super weird the first few days I stayed here because I'm just not used to being in a house and I found it quite annoying how far I had to walk to get to everything. I'm kind of used to it now, which is not good because I will have to go back to my tiny, very hot apartment in two weeks. But anyway, I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year's Eve or holiday period. And thank you to everyone who watched and commented. I feel like there's been a real new lease of life in terms of booktube this year with lots of new people starting channels and I've made a whole bunch of new, very lovely friends. Genuinely the sweetest people. I'll wrap this up here, but keep an eye out for my favorite movies of 2022. I haven't even created the list yet. That's probably gonna be my task for today. I am excited about it. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.